Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Seeing her husband with his lover at the notary's office, the wife smirked. The lovers had no idea what awaited them when the will was read. Rafe, when are you coming back? His wife spoke angrily on the phone. I'm not made of iron. I don't have the strength to work and take care of Alonzo. So you're telling me to drop everything and come home? Rafe replied furiously. You know, Danita, I'm not made of iron either. I'm trying to hold on to this job precisely because we need to treat our son. Rafe hung up. He was fed up. He was on his way to Maria. She had become his only solace lately. After three years, he was exhausted. His son had suddenly fallen ill. Back then, he and his wife didn't know the ordeal that awaited them. Eventually, after six months, the doctor began to doubt the diagnosis. They were sent for further tests, and this time there was a suspicion of cancer. Alonzo had just turned 16. He stopped going to school. Danita was going out of her mind. She visited churches, monasteries, and observed fasts. Nothing helped. They gave everything they had to improve their son's condition. But after a year of intense struggle, Rafe was worn out. Returning home was difficult for him, and he found an escape. An acquaintance of his had long had her eyes on him, so he wasn't too concerned about it. He showed up at Maria's as he was, and their affair began out of the blue. His wife, on the other hand, had no time for his personal life. Danita had become exhausted. She started working night shifts to be home with their son during the day. Her life had turned into a real hell. Yes, Rafe, as she thought, brought home all the money. But he had completely stopped supporting her. Danita handled all household chores, called doctors, and took care of everything. Danita often felt that one day she simply wouldn't get out of bed. The fatigue had accumulated to the point where she couldn't even scream. Eventually, Alonzo needed urgent surgery, and it was a matter of life and death. His mother fought for him with her last strength. During this time, relatives and acquaintances had already helped as much as they could, so Danita sat and cried, not knowing where to find the money. Waiting for the quota would have taken many years, and naturally, Alonzo wouldn't have survived to that point. In her despair, Danita tried to grasp at anything. Her mind had become so dulled by constant stress that she simply sat and stared at one spot. Two weeks ago, she quit her job because she could no longer work. Then she was informed that Alonzo needed urgent surgery. Her husband almost didn't help with the organizational issues. Danita snapped back to reality. She didn't want to lie, but at that point, she even dreamt of just closing her eyes and disappearing. And human exhaustion had overtaken her. She was bearing an unbearable burden that was pressing her closer and closer to the ground. A thought crossed her mind. Danita remembered reading once that people who worked 12-hour shifts often drove themselves to the point of suicide. What can I do? She looked up. I don't know how I can help my son. At that moment, Danita saw the problem like everyone else did. She thought her child's life depended on her. The mother had completely taken on the responsibility, running from one doctor to another, trying everything she could find, using any information, and it was driving her mad. Alonzo called for his mother, and she went to him. The young man was lying in bed, not getting up. Yes, son, his mother looked at him with tear-filled eyes. Do you want something? Mom, my birthday is in two days. The son smiled crookedly. I would like a puppy. You know how I've always wanted a Labrador. Danita knew that this would add more to her troubles, but she nodded and kissed her son, gave Alonzo some water, and went back to the kitchen, glancing at the clock. Rafe had promised he would return soon. The wife stopped calling him and, in her desperation, called a friend. Rita, hi, she said, and, unable to hold back, she cried, Rita, I think I'm going to die. My heart can't take it. Danita, the woman became anxious. Didn't they agree to pay for the surgery? No, she sobbed, only a wait for a quarter. But it's the end. He won't survive until then. Rita, I can't take it. I don't know what to do. 
Alonzo asked me for a puppy. In two days, he will turn 18, and I can't even do that. I don't have the money to buy him a Labrador. Danita, I'll find the money for the dog, Rita reassured her, it might be his last wish. Rita often had to listen to her friend's woes. She understood how hard it was for her. Danita's parents lived far away and couldn't visit regularly. Occasionally, Danita's in-laws would come by, but they didn't take care of Alonzo. All the responsibility fell on the mother. Rita, I don't understand why we need medicine, Danita fumed. To treat the flu? Everything is so stupid and meaningless. If saving a person requires payment, then what kind of free healthcare is that? It's all lies and double standards everywhere. So why do we need doctors? Any herbalist could tell you how to treat kidneys or liver, not them. Doctors go through training to save people in difficult situations, to perform surgeries, saving lives. And if they demand huge amounts of money for this, then it's already a private business. The question then arises, why don't public hospitals perform these surgeries for free? Rita understood the anger that had built up inside her friend. She didn't have answers to these questions. It all seemed very strange. They ended their conversation. Rita was beside herself. She had helped her friend many times. Fortunately, her husband was very kind-hearted. He had a small business, so whenever possible, Rita would send some money to Alonzo. No one can raise that amount on their own, her friend whispered, we need to approach someone. Danita hated begging for money. She was principled about not turning to any volunteer organizations, as there were too many scammers among them. Danita absolutely didn't want people to collect money for Alonzo and then pocket it for themselves. Rita had an idea. She grabbed her phone and found the necessary number. Esther, hi, how are you? She spoke quickly to her cousin. I really need your help. We've never dealt with this kind of thing. Remember my friend Danita? Her son is sick. He needs an urgent surgery that costs a lot of money. Naturally, Danita doesn't have it. You've been in Madrid for a long time. Maybe you can recommend a reliable organization. We will provide all the documents. The boy is turning 18 soon. He deserves to live. Her cousin promised to call back in a couple of hours. It was already half past seven, and Rita started preparing dinner, expecting her husband to return from work soon. One. She rushed into the hallway. Finally, I have so much to tell you. Her husband undressed and entered the kitchen, where the table was already set. It had been a difficult day for him, but he still engaged in the conversation with Rita. The couple had two children. Their older son was in his second year of university in Barcelona, and their daughter had just started college. She was living with her father's lonely aunt, so Rita and Juan's children were well taken care of. Juan, I spoke with Danita, Rita said excitedly, well, things are not working out for Alonzo, only a paid operation. But where will they get that much money? He sighed. It's just unrealistic. I talked to Esther. She found a reliable organization for raising money for cancer patients. I haven't told Danita yet, Rita looked at Juan, but they have no other options. I understand, her husband replied. You won't raise 300000 with a begging bowl. I think it's a good idea. Juan, Rita gently took her husband's hand. Please, don't refuse my request. Alonzo's birthday is in two days. He wants a puppy. Danita has no money right now. They've spent everything on tests. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. He squeezed Rita's hand. We won't go bankrupt from this money. Rafe entered the familiar house. He met with Maria several times a week. Hi. The woman threw herself around his neck. Rafe, I've been waiting for you. The guest passionately kissed her. Without a second thought, he took his lover's hand and led her to the bedroom. Afterward, they had a delicious dinner. Recently, Danita had no energy to prepare delicacies for Rafe. Alonzo was on a special diet. The mother had become accustomed to the food she cooked for him. So, how are things? 
Maria asked with interest. Did you find the money for the surgery? No, not at all, the man waved his hand. Maria, such an amount doesn't just lie around on the street. She supported him. In her mind, taking care of Rafe was helping Danita, as she now had to focus on herself, not her husband. Strange logic, but it didn't bother her. Maria, if you only knew how tired I am, Rafe complained to his lover, I have no strength left, I'm already dreaming of this all coming to an end. I don't think Alonzo's surgery will help either. Can you really save a cancer patient? She supported him. So much effort wasted for nothing. Don't even mention it, Rafe sighed, it's all pointless. But what can you do? She's stubborn. She insists on saving him, and that's it. Of course, the situation was too complicated to just discuss what should or shouldn't be. From the outside, when someone is detached, it seems to lack meaning. But can an outsider decide what can or cannot be? It doesn't concern them at all. And the same went for Maria. She had no connection to Rafe's family and didn't feel any sympathy for his son. What opinions could she have? The woman was completely unaware of the situation, so her comments were meaningless, just like anyone else who wasn't connected to Alonzo. Yet Maria somehow thought that her opinions carried weight with Rafe and that her advice would have an impact on him. What did she want? Only her own happiness. She had been married twice before, and both marriages failed. Maria had no children. She had recently turned 38 and tried living with another man, but that didn't work out either. The last man went back to his family, leaving Maria with only her own interests. In Maria's view, Rafe was a handsome man with extraordinary passion, so for her, everything revolved around satisfying her own needs. And in general, Maria dreamed of Alonzo dying quickly so that Rafe would immediately divorce his wife and marry her. They had discussed these plans more than once. Rafe often referred to his nobility, saying he couldn't abandon his son in such a difficult situation. But in reality, he wished him dead too. He was, of course, tired. But it wasn't about that, it was about ending the difficulties so he could start living a carefree life. For some reason, he thought that if Maria promised him such a fate, she could be trusted. For Danita, Rafe was often delayed at work. She had no time to argue. At that moment, she felt like she didn't belong to herself. Even though she was almost 40, her strength was running out. But Danita, unlike Rafe, was ready to give her life for her son's recovery. Unfortunately, no one from above accepted such a sacrifice. Around nine, her husband returned home. Danita had already fed Alonzo, who had fallen asleep. The boy often slept because he didn't have the energy, so his body was conserving its resources. Are you going to have dinner? Danita asked him. Rafe, sleep with Alonzo tonight. At least I'll get some rest. Fine, he grumbled unhappily, clearly displeased with such night shifts. Alonzo might wake up, ask for water, or need a diaper change. His father didn't like these things. Rafe, Alonzo asked for a puppy for his birthday. His wife cried, maybe you could find someone who has the money? Who am I going to ask? He swore. Danita, I'm already embarrassed to face people. Raphael forgave me an old debt, and Rolando said I didn't need to repay him. Rafe didn't even consider asking his mistress. After all, Maria could have given him a couple of hundred. And her rotten nature showed itself the next morning. Rafe was on his way to work and called Maria. He started complaining about how he hadn't slept almost all night, even though it wasn't true. He had only gotten up twice, and it probably took him just half an hour. Alonzo asked for a puppy for his birthday. He swore, Maria, where am I supposed to get that kind of money? He wants a purebred. A mutt won't do. You know, I think he's just manipulating you, she replied discontentedly, stop indulging all his whims. First, he wanted grapes, and you went to a 24-hour store at night. Now he needs a book, and you have to buy it. In reality, there had only been a few instances of such demands throughout Alonzo's illness. The grape incident was particularly foolish. That night, 
Rafe was on duty with his son. Alonzo had woken up in the middle of the night and told his father about a dream in which he was eating grapes. I'd love to have a bunch right now, the boy smiled, it's so strange, it's cold outside, but I want grapes. And what do you suggest? His father snapped. Should I bring them to you at one in the morning? Alonzo didn't understand his father's irritation, but five minutes later, he left his room. Rafe took a stand and drove around a few stores in town until he found grapes. In the morning, he kept complaining to Danita. Alonzo denied asking his father to go to the store, but Rafe continued to lie. Rita once told her friend that her husband was angry with their son not because he was sick, but because Danita paid more attention to him than to him. In his heart, the husband hated Alonzo because his wife had stopped fulfilling her marital duties, having no strength left for anything except Alonzo. Danita cared for him and, it seemed, was trying to fulfill any of his whims. Not every woman can become a mother, and not every man can become a father. This became evident in Rafe when Alonzo fell ill. In Rafe's eyes, Alonzo turned into a competitor. He ceased to be his child. This created all the discomfort and dislike towards him. But Rafe was not perceptive enough to see this. Therefore, he covered everything up with exhaustion from family life. For this reason, he could easily justify having a mistress. Yes, Maria, you're right. He'll probably be the death of U.S., Rafe swore, you're the only one who understands me. Without you, I'd probably have gone crazy. His mistress greatly enjoyed these moments. They clearly demonstrated her importance in the man's life. Maria was convinced that if she had no luck three times, the fourth time everything would finally turn out as she wanted. She believed that Rafe could be easily manipulated, which meant that she would eventually succeed in marrying him. I love you, she said with feigned sincerity. Rafe, you're all I have in life. How could I abandon you in trouble, my love? I will always support you. Danita had somewhat recovered. She had slept through the night and felt refreshed. Her mood improved. Around nine o'clock, her friend called. Rita delivered some good news. Danita, don't worry about the puppy, she said right away. Juan found a white Labrador. So Alonzo will finally get his gift. Rita, her friend cried with joy, thank you so much. Only God knows how much you've done for my son. Stop it, Rita replied sternly, that's what friends are for, to help each other. Let him bring it today, it can stay with us for now, and tomorrow morning, ask Rafe to come and pick it up. Danita was overjoyed. She was beaming with happiness. She even imagined Alonzo's face when he saw his gift. The day went very well. Danita even thought Alonzo seemed to be feeling better. Of course, Danita was immensely suffering because she knew she wouldn't be able to find the money for the operation. But bringing joy to her child, even for a few days, was already a happiness for her. And then, the long-awaited day arrived. Rafe went to his wife's friend's house with little enthusiasm. The whole situation made him uncomfortable. It seemed that Juan, Rita's husband, could buy the puppy, but he couldn't. This wounded his pride. Why do you always embarrass me? Rafe argued with Danita. I feel like a beggar. This is the last time, do you hear me? This is the last time anyone does anything for our son. Rafe, if we don't have the means, why can't someone help our boy? His wife tried to reason with him. Because it's our problem, he retorted angrily, don't drag other people into it. You know, I'm not imposing on anyone, Danita said tersely, it's just that some people understand our situation. They sympathize and want to help Alonzo, and there's nothing shameful about that. I'm not stealing from anyone, I'm not forcing anyone, and what you're talking about is pride. Rafe didn't say anything and went to get the Labrador. Danita was increasingly annoying him. Fool. His jaw clenched. I don't know if I can stand her much longer. Why all these sacrifices? I could be living happily with Maria right now. Rafe wasn't particularly friendly. Rita handed him the puppy. The woman had groomed it, tied a beautiful bow around its neck, and also wrote a very kind card. Thank you, 
The guest replied without much enthusiasm, but it wasn't necessary. I could have found the money somewhere. Rita smiled, told Rafe that it was from the heart, and once again admitted that she saw Alonzo as her own son. Danita eagerly awaited her husband's return. Alonzo was still sleeping, and she hoped it would be a surprise. Her husband entered, holding a small box, from which someone was whimpering. Oh my God, how cute! The Labrador nuzzled into her chest. Don't be afraid, you're very much awaited here. But then the voice of her son reached her. The mother took the gift and went to him. Rita had said that the puppy had received all the necessary vaccinations so Alonzo could hold it without concern. Happy birthday! Danita said loudly as she and her husband entered their son's room. Mom, Dad. His eyes lit up. A puppy. He reached out his skinny arms to the Labrador. Alonzo cried like a child. Danita couldn't take it anymore. She ran to the kitchen as a lump rose in her throat and she wanted to sob from the pain. She washed her face with cold water and returned to Alonzo with red eyes. Rafe didn't take much part in the event. Well, I have to go, he said curtly and headed for the hallway. I'll come back earlier today. Then you can tell me what groceries to bring. The man didn't like the whole spectacle, but he had to participate in Alonzo's birthday celebration. Danita, like a little girl, played with her son and the puppy. Alonzo stopped crying and eventually fell asleep in his new pet's arms. Alonzo didn't let go of the puppy, feeling happy. Of course, due to his severe illness, he didn't look like an 18-year-old, but Danita was very pleased. She kept thanking her friend and her husband in her heart. And what will you name him? The mother asked. Alonzo, he's so funny. Seraphim, her son replied seriously. Danita smiled, but a shiver ran down her spine. She involuntarily shuddered. Well, all right, let it be Seraphim, she agreed. Son, I'm so happy that you're happy. I've dreamed of him for many years, Alonzo said. Thank you for agreeing. If only time could be reversed, Danita thought, I would fulfill all my child's wishes. But she couldn't lie to herself. They didn't always have the means to buy everything Alonzo had asked for as a child. For many years, they had been paying off debts for their apartment, and just when she and Rafe had started to feel free and as if a new life had begun, this tragedy with Alonzo happened. But this wasn't the last surprise awaiting Danita in those days. Later in the evening, Rita called her. Danita, I have very good news, she said excitedly, I found a good organization. Everything is official there. Danita, we need to raise money for Alonzo's surgery. Rita, I'm afraid, Danita replied, stunned, you know I don't want to ask people for money. I called my cousin Esther. You remember her, she lives in Madrid. Anyway, she helped find a very serious organization, her friend continued, you'll need to provide all the necessary documents. Since Alonzo is now of age, you'll need to open an account in his name. You need to make arrangements with the bank. Don't be afraid to pay for the staff visit, Danita. You need to fight for your son. This is his only chance. You won't get any quotas, and he'll die in six months. Is that what you want? No, Danita cried. Rita, okay, I'll talk to Rafe. In the evening, Danita and Rafe had dinner with Alonzo to keep him company. Then their son played with his puppy. Danita called Rafe to another room to talk. Rafe, Alonzo can be helped, she began cautiously, there's an organization in Madrid. They work with people in situations like ours. They agreed to help us raise the money. No, her husband cut her off immediately, Danita, we've already discussed this. I don't want to end up in prison later. Rafe, this is a chance for Alonzo, his wife pleaded, I'm asking you, let's go for it. I told you no, he answered loudly, we're not doing it. Rafe stormed out of the apartment, angry. Danita had completely spoiled his mood. Of course, he went to his mistress, as in his mind, the contrast between his wife and Maria made Maria seem like the holiest woman in the world. 
Rafe, of course, you don't have to agree to this. Maria supported him, especially since the organization is in Madrid, which is full of fraudsters. Honestly, she's an idiot. He swore about his wife. She's gone crazy over Alonzo. Rafe settled into his mistress's arms while Danita was indeed going mad. She initially mourned deeply over her husband's refusal, but then... Why should he decide what I do? Her eyes lit up. Alonzo is my son, and I will do whatever it takes to get him treated. If he doesn't want to participate, fine, but I will still submit the documents. I won't force anyone. If someone is willing to contribute even a small amount to my child's recovery, I'll accept it, and I won't be ashamed anymore. So Danita decided not to say anything more to Rafe, took full responsibility on herself, and no longer cared about her husband's opinion. Her husband returned late. Danita was already asleep in their son's room. Rafe didn't want to leave Maria, but he wasn't ready to stay with her overnight just yet. As soon as all this is over, I'll divorce her immediately, he whispered, I have no patience left for her, and with these thoughts, he fell asleep. In contrast, hope kindled in Danita's heart. She looked forward with anticipation and greeted the morning with a cheerful mood. After her husband left for work, Danita began gathering all the necessary documents that Rita had sent her over the phone. By noon, she had sent everything off and awaited a response from the organization's administrator. As her friend had said, she needed to sort out the account for Alonzo. So, while the other documents were being checked, the mother quickly went to the bank. They understood her situation and agreed to send an employee to sign the contract. Three days later, everything was ready. The Madrid charity organization informed her that they had launched the project for Alonzo. No one could guarantee how long it would take to raise the required amount. Doctors said that Alonzo needed surgery within the next three months. Of course, the amount of 300,000 euros was enormous, but Danita hoped they would be lucky. To her great amazement, within a week, her son's account already had 50,000 euros. Lord, I beg you, help, the woman prayed constantly, may those who can and are willing to donate to my son find the announcement about the fundraising. Alonzo was not particularly involved in all this. He, like a child, spent whole days playing with his new friend. Seraphim turned out to be a capable puppy. The boy tried to teach him some commands, but he was limited by his bed, so their training sessions were not as effective as he had hoped. Nevertheless, Seraphim brought Alonzo immense joy. Then Rafe learned that money was being raised for Alonzo. Volunteers from their town had put up announcements. What a bastard. The husband raged. She has embarrassed me. He was ashamed that his family was being discussed at work. Some people were even giving him money personally. The man was almost burning with embarrassment. He would have preferred anything, even his son's death, just to avoid experiencing this horror. Rafe couldn't handle the feeling that he was to blame for everything. As a father, he had failed to deal with his son's illness, and Danita had spread it across the country with her frivolous actions. I hate her. He cursed all day until his shift ended. He was tearing things apart. He was heading home with the sole intention of confronting Danita. I told you not to do this. He shouted. You've set me up. I'm walking around like a fool, and everyone is laughing at me. What nonsense are you talking about? She disagreed. This is about our son's life. I don't care what anyone thinks. I asked you. Rafe slammed his fist on the table. You've completely lost your mind. Really? Danita, like a lioness attacking a lion, retorted, He's my son, and I will protect him. At any cost, and I'm not interested in your prejudices. Oh, is that so? The husband grabbed her by the arm. Then know this. From now on, I don't care what happens to you either. Do you understand? I'm not going to live with you anymore. Danita watched in horror as her husband packed his bags. She couldn't believe her eyes. So you're ready to leave me and our son alone in this difficult situation, she whispered. Yes, he replied. You don't care about me anyway, and you know what? I understand why you organized all this. You want to show how good a mother you are. 
you're mainly interested in fulfilling your ambitions. You deliberately set me up to make everyone see how worthless I am. I don't have 300,000 euros to save Alanzo. You're an idiot, the wife said, shaking her head. I only want one thing, for my son to survive. I have no more ambitions. I don't want to prove anything to anyone. Rafe didn't listen to her. He left the apartment with one large bag. He didn't care anymore. Danita didn't run after him. She actually thought the situation was so ridiculous that her husband would come to his senses and return to her in a few days. But that didn't happen. Rafe went to Maria. He was confident in his decision. From that day on, the man decided he would no longer hide anything. A week later, the news reached Danita. She wept bitterly. Not only was she left alone with an enormous burden, but she also had to deal with Rafe's betrayal. You know, Danita, it's in situations like these that the true nature of those close to you is revealed, sighed Rita, he's always been such a bastard. Alanzo's illness just made that bastard come out and show himself in all his glory. Rita, why? Danita shook her head. For fighting for his son's life for two and a half years? For not sleeping at night, for giving everything for our family? People like him don't understand such things. Your Rafe needs to be the center of attention, for you to only run around him, Rita sighed, he doesn't care at all. I think he even dreamed of Alanzo's death. So, any attempts to save him caused him such aggression. Rita and Danita were sitting in her kitchen. The women stood up and looked in on Alanzo, who, as always, was playing with Seraphim. Rita, is it really possible? Your one helped a stranger's child, the women returned to their coffee. Rita, if everyone were the same, nothing would ever happen in life, she smiled. You see, I think there's some meaning in this. You saw the unreal Rafe and the man who was your ideal, and now let's ponder what would happen if you fell ill, he would leave you immediately. So why would you want him? Well, maybe you're right, Danita agreed, I'm 50, and what? My husband vanished, but it still hurts that he found another woman. Danita, that's the point, said Rita, you didn't live up to his expectations. So he's not going to waste any more time on you. I'll tell you more. I even doubt that if something happens to Alanzo, he won't immediately start blaming you. You, who gave everything for your son's recovery, will become his biggest enemy in his eyes. Can he really sink that low? Danita sighed. I could then confidently say that I never knew my husband at all. He doesn't need to sink any lower, Danita. He's already been at the bottom for a long time. Can you believe he had an affair and blamed his wife for everything? And you're sitting with a sick child while he sleeps peacefully at night, her friend answered sadly, although, perhaps, he might hit a new low. People like him are capable of only that. After this conversation with Rita, Danita felt a bit better. Of course, betrayal couldn't be forgotten quickly. But Danita decided to focus entirely on her son. She felt that the puppy had given Alanzo more strength, and now he could continue fighting. Nevertheless, Danita faced a second front in her life. She couldn't understand her husband's actions at all. She couldn't file for divorce right now because the situation in her life was not ideal. Rafe was also silent on the matter. In the event of a divorce, they would need to split the apartment in half, and Danita was not prepared for that at all. She decided to postpone these matters until after Alanzo's surgery. But to Rafe's great surprise, many people didn't understand him. Some openly approached him and expressed their contempt. This deeply offended the man. Everyone supported his wife, and what's more, they expressed themselves in vulgar terms about Maria. Rafe found himself trapped. Rafe, we need to do something, his lover said to him, I was covered in dirt from head to toe at the store today. Why? Because I love you? Because I've supported you all this time? Maria, how will you shut everyone up? He sighed. Rafe himself already regretted revealing himself too soon. Well, there's only one way to do that, she said cunningly, we need to come up with something about Danita to tarnish her reputation, and then our reputation will be restored. 
For several days, Maria developed her plan, and finally, she came up with an idea. She wasn't a genius, but she thought it would definitely work. So, she said to her lover, looking him straight in the eyes, Alonzo is not your son. Danita had him with someone else. And you found out when you gave him blood, it turned out you have different DNA. Rafe hesitated, it seemed too much. Even for him, lying about a sick child seemed sacrilegious. But when the next day he was publicly humiliated at work, he no longer hesitated. What do you know about my life? He yelled at Rolando. Do you think I'm an idiot? Alonzo is not my son. Danita had him with someone else. I don't even know who the father is. We did a DNA test. The man immediately fell silent. Such statements are not made lightly. Rafe told his sad story, where his treacherous wife had foisted her child on him, and he had been unaware of it all these years. Oh God! Danita clutched her head. Is he out of his mind? She picked up the phone, intending to call Rafe, but his phone didn't answer. She wanted to go to his workplace to find out what was going on. Rumors had spread around town that Rafe had allegedly admitted that Danita had cheated on him and that Alonzo was not his son. No, she stopped herself. God will be his judge. I won't humiliate myself in front of him. Life will sort everything out in its own time. As painful as it was for Danita, she decided not to make a scene. Her husband had lied, and there was nothing for her to justify. Two months passed. Almost two fifty thousand had been raised for Alonzo's treatment. His mother was overjoyed. She had started contacting Madrid, as such brain surgeries were only performed there. The morning was very cloudy. She entered Alonzo's room. He was already awake, and she immediately noticed that something was wrong. Alonzo, sweetheart, what happened? She approached him. Is something wrong with Seraphim? No, he shook his head negatively. Mom, I need to go, her son suddenly said. Danita was as if paralyzed. She even stopped breathing. Tears streamed from her eyes. Alonzo, she couldn't hold back and hugged her son. My dear, don't say that. Mom, I was told last night that I need to go back, her son said seriously, and it was clear that he was very anxious as well. We will definitely meet at home. Don't worry, I will be waiting for you there. No. Danita screamed. Son, don't go. I'm begging you, don't leave me. Mommy, he stroked her head. It will be better for both of us. He told me so. Who is he? The mother couldn't calm down. Alonzo, I don't believe in these dreams. I'm begging you. God, her son simply answered, Mom, I was home last night. It is very nice there, much better than here. I was completely healthy and could walk. You know that place too, you just forgot about it. Danita plunged into the deepest grief she had ever experienced. Her chest felt like it was tearing apart from the inside. Mom, I was truly happy there, Alonzo continued. I want to go back, that's where my home is. Do you really want to go there? Danita suddenly calmed down. Son, are you really happy there? Yes, he smiled in a way that lit up the whole room. I can't even tell you how good it was there. There is love and peace everywhere. The mother wiped away her tears. Her heart experienced some kind of transformation. It was as if she saw what her son had been talking about. Well, she stroked Alonzo's head. I will miss you very much, but I feel that we will definitely meet again. Yes, he assured her, Mom, our separation will end quickly. There is no time there. Did God speak to you? She asked with interest. Alonzo, what does he look like? He approached me as a young man of my age and took my hand. We walked around and I started to remember those places. I had been there many times. Then he told me that I need to return. It will be better for both of us and I agreed. Some light seemed to emanate from Danita's chest. She felt peace as if she had touched something very important to her. Mom, call a notary, Alonzo suddenly asked, I need to make a will. A will? She couldn't understand again. Alonzo, did he tell you this too? 
The young man nodded. The mother didn't ask him more about it. Her son told her it was his business to finish before he left. Well, then, she agreed, I will go to the notary now and ask him to come to us. Danita, with trembling legs, left Alonzo's room and fell onto the bed. Tears choked her. She now felt that her son was telling the truth. He would be leaving soon. After lunch, the notary arrived, and Alonzo worked on some matters with him. Danita resolutely refused to get involved. She only thought about never seeing her son again. The pain made it hard for her to breathe. In the last days, Danita hardly left her boy's side. They tried to spend all their time together. The woman still hoped that this dream would not come true, but... It was Friday. Danita woke up late, hearing Seraphim whining. The woman dashed to her son's room. She thought he was asleep. The mother mechanically touched his hand and froze. It was cold. No. She screamed at the top of her lungs. Alonzo, please open your eyes. But the boy remained asleep. An angelic smile was frozen on his face. Danita called her friend. Rita arrived immediately. Danita, you should inform the charity that Alonzo has passed away. Rita began to think, my friend, I advise you to keep part of the money. You need to organize the funeral and get yourself together. I don't know what Rafe will say, Danita suddenly remembered. She had completely forgotten about the document Alonzo had asked her to read after his death. Rita, he wrote a deed of gift to me, she recalled the notary. That's good, Rita was pleased, so Rafe has no connection to this, especially since he publicly disowned him. Danita, I really don't advise you to tell him anything. Rita, I can't do that. Danita disagreed. He might say whatever he wants to others, but Alonzo is his son, and he knows that. Danita faced a complex dilemma regarding the money Alonzo had raised. She categorically did not want to take it, but on the other hand, Rita was right. After the divorce, she would have nothing, no home. She had neither the physical nor the moral strength to work, and she had no money for the funeral. All her funds went towards Alonzo's medications and food. So Danita kept a small portion of the money for herself and transferred the rest to the charity. They were immensely grateful as the money could be used to save other people. Thank God, he has suffered enough, Maria said with a moralizing tone. And what should I do? Rafe looked at her. I told everyone that Alonzo is not my son. Well, that's good. You have no reason to be involved, Maria smiled. Since he is not your son, these funerals have nothing to do with you. Maria, I can't do that, Rafe blushed. After all, he has my blood. Rafe, why all these emotions? She snapped angrily. Just imagine, you show up at the funeral. Everyone will immediately become suspicious, you will be blamed again, Danita will be the good one, and you will be the bad one. Is that what you want? No, he answered immediately, last time people drove me crazy, you are right. I won't go to the funeral, he agreed. But saying it was one thing, and not feeling pangs of guilt was another. Of course, Rafe wasn't so sensitive, he was deeply troubled and wanted to say goodbye to Alonzo, but he felt ashamed. Ashamed of his cowardice, of abandoning a sick child, of slandering his wife. Rafe actually felt revulsion towards himself. If it weren't for Maria, he would have put aside his principles and done what his heart told him, rather than his mind. But for pragmatic Maria, such an outcome seemed risky. She could lose her potential suitor, so she was willing to do anything to keep him. What if he feels sympathy at the funeral, remembers that he once loved Danita, and I'm left without a husband? No way, the mistress fumed to herself. So, Rafe made a decision for a better future, which he would deeply regret later. But that was a concern for the future. For now, Maria was more important to him. The funeral was difficult. Rita tried not to leave her friend alone. Danita would alternate between calming down and falling into despair and pain. At times, she felt she had lost everything, even her life. She was convinced that she, too, had died. 
She barely got through the first three days, and the absence of her husband at the funeral didn't even bother her. Danita spent most of her time lying on her bed. Rita and her husband disposed of almost everything that had once belonged to Alonzo. This made Danita feel a bit better. She kept only the most precious items that reminded her of her son. In fact, the most cherished memory for her was Seraphim. The puppy had grown into an adolescent, always following his owner. The Labrador behaved very well in public places. Seraphim, let's go, his owner said, taking his leash and heading towards the house. The dog obeyed. He barked a couple of times in agreement and took his place. Seraphim attracted the attention of all passers-by. His snow-white fur shone in the sunlight and charmed everyone who came near. Unexpectedly, Danita found herself by the entrance to her husband's apartment. He didn't look her in the eye. Danita, I need to collect my things, he said awkwardly. I filed for divorce. All right, she replied calmly, we'll divide the apartment fairly, 50 to 50. Danita didn't want to argue, so she sat in the kitchen and waited while Rafe collected what he needed. He was worried that she would make a scene or complain about his absence from the funeral, but to his great surprise, Danita remained silent. I'm leaving, he muttered as he left. His wife nodded and closed the door behind him. Nothing stirred in her heart. Danita felt that Seraphim meant much more to her than her former husband. She patted the dog and teared up. He was the only link she had to Alonzo. You're my good boy, she said sweetly to Seraphim, you're my family. I'll never leave you. Maria was rushing home from work. What she had learned was a bombshell. She had suspected it all along. Of course, she was getting money for Alonzo, Maria thought on the way home which means that in the divorce she owes us half the amount. Maria was sure the sum was 300000 This meant she and Rafe would get half, 150000 She smiled dreamily. Finally, I'll have a car and a proper fur coat, and I want a diamond necklace and an expensive engagement ring. These prospects made Maria giddy. Naturally, Rafe was supposed to buy all this for her. First, I need to sort things out with the notary, and if she doesn't want to give us half, then we'll sue her, Maria thought with satisfaction, we won't be made fools of. So, she returned home with a ready plan. Rafe was still at work. With more than two weeks left before the divorce, Maria decided not to delay. She waited for her lover to come home, rehearsed everything she planned to say, and felt sure her plan would work. Rafe, she threw herself around his neck, I have something to tell you, you won't believe it. The man looked at her tiredly. Since he had collected his things and filed for divorce, he had been in a constant bad mood. What happened? He asked without much interest. Are you pregnant? Oh, for heaven's sake. Maria spat, hoping it would never happen. She had calmed down a bit, but she was so worked up over the upcoming changes that she could barely control herself. Rafe. Danita has 300,000 euros. People collected the money for Alonzo's surgery, she said triumphantly. According to the law, she must give us half, or rather, you, Maria corrected herself. It wasn't the time for frank discussions. Maria, I don't want to get involved, Rafe replied unexpectedly. Danita handled this matter herself, so I'm not really involved. Are you out of your mind? Maria yelled. Sorry, but you invested so much in that child, and she hasn't worked lately. You were supporting them, darling. It's unfair. I've suffered so much over this. I'm entitled to some compensation, too. Rafe thought for a moment. He really didn't want to get into this. Deep down, he knew that everything Alonzo earned was only thanks to his wife. Fine, he finally agreed. I'll ask Danita to meet me at the notary's office. Let him explain to both of us what I'm entitled to. Maria was ecstatic. Her eyes sparkled with zeros. She was sure that Rafe would support her, but now she had a chance to make a good profit. Why miss the opportunity? With little enthusiasm, Rafe called his wife and asked her to come to the notary's office. Danita agreed, sensing what it was about. 
She smiled, realizing only now that Rafe had renounced her and Alonzo not of his own volition. Someone had clearly advised him, and Danita knew exactly who. She took Seraphim and headed to the notary's office at the appointed time. She waited outside the office for Rafe. Danita was somewhat shocked when her almost ex-husband arrived with his mistress. Maria pretended not to know her. She took Rafe's arm and headed into the office. Probably dreaming about Alonzo's money, Danita sighed and tied the dog up outside the door so he wouldn't be a nuisance. Rafe spoke to the notary and explained the situation. Danita remained silent. The notary listened to her husband and then turned to her. Yes, that's right, she confirmed, but Rafe is not aware of how the money collected for our son was handled. Here is Alonzo's will, she handed over a document. My son bequeathed all his property to me. I returned almost all the money to the charity, and the small remainder was spent on the funeral and on my husband's share of our apartment. The notary carefully examined the documents and found no grounds for Rafe to claim Alonzo's money. But how can this be? He supported both his ex-wife and his sick son. Maria barely controlled herself. The money belonged to Alonzo, and since he was an adult, he could decide what to do with it. There's no legal violation here, the notary calmly replied. Maria was flushed with anger. A minute later, she left the office, followed by Rafe. We need to sue her, Maria immediately declared, look at the audacity. She's taken everything for herself and wants to cheat us. Maria fumed like an old steam engine. She didn't want to lose the money. Rafe remained silent. He felt ashamed. He was repulsed by the whole situation. Let's go home. He took her hand. There's nothing more to be done here. All the way home, Maria ranted and threatened Rafe's ex-wife. Rafe listened to her, growing more and more disgusted with himself. Why did I get involved in all this? The question kept spinning in his mind. I traded such a woman for this fool. Despite Maria's attempts to create scandals, her lover never sued his ex-wife. After the divorce, Rafe was completely disappointed in Maria, just as she was in him. Rafe sold his share to Danita. Maria hoped he would spend the money on her. But Rafe was not that foolish. Maria, thank you for everything, he said one day when he came home from work, but I can't stay. I'm leaving. At first, Maria's anger flared, but she maintained her dignity. You couldn't get along with your wife, and now not with me either, she jabbed at him one last time. Rafe moved his things to his parents' house. They criticized him for how he treated his son and his wife, but they did not throw him out. For almost two weeks, Rafe wandered around in a daze. Finally, he gathered the courage. He went to the cemetery, stood in front of his son's grave, and felt an overwhelming pain. I'm sorry, son, Rafe hugged the gravestone, I don't know what happened to me. After this, the man came to an important conclusion. No one had given him a guarantee, but he decided to be a real man at least once. Danita, he waited for his ex-wife by the entrance, can we talk? Sure, she opened the entrance door wide, and Rafe stepped in. She quickly set the kettle on. She was already working. Seraphim was nervous. It was time for his walk, and now some stranger had come by. The dog barely remembered Rafe. Danita, I'm sorry, Rafe lowered his head, I made so many mistakes. Danita was silent. She had anticipated this conversation. She was prepared for it. Rafe, I've forgiven you, she looked him straight in the eye, but we will never be together again. Three months passed. It was a warm Saturday. Danita took Fema with her, and they headed towards the cemetery. She often visited Alonzo. Hello, son, she said loudly, how are you doing? She stroked the gravestone. Seraphim sat by the bench, but then suddenly disappeared somewhere, and Danita didn't even notice. Woof, he ran back from somewhere and began to tug at her, pulling her along. The woman was frightened, but followed him as he raced through some bushes and monuments. What's wrong with you? She asked anxiously. Where are you going? Stop. But the dog continued to run. 
Suddenly, he stopped, and Danita saw that a person was sitting on the bench. His head was resting on the table. Hey, what's wrong with you? Danita approached him. Are you sleeping? The stranger didn't respond. She moved closer. The man was unconscious. Danita unbuttoned his shirt and slapped his face. The stranger's eyes opened. It was clear he was in distress. Ambulance. Emergency. A person is dying. Danita shouted anxiously into the phone. She waited for the doctors to arrive. The stranger was taken to the hospital. Danita asked where he would be taken. She was told he was going to the main ward. The next day, Danita woke up with a strong feeling that she needed to visit the stranger. She left Seraphim at home and went to the hospital in the morning. Danita managed to find out who she needed. She didn't know his first or last name. She wasn't even sure what the man looked like. The visitor entered the room and noticed a man sleeping. Danita looked at him closely. The stranger was around 40, but his gray hair made him look much older. The man jolted awake and opened his eyes. Danita approached him. He looked at her with confusion. I found you at the cemetery last night and called an ambulance, she explained, or rather, my dog Seraphim found you. Thank you, he managed a faint smile, I had come to see my daughter. She died a year ago, and I felt unwell. I recently lost my son too. He was sick for a long time, Danita replied, my dog and I visited him yesterday. I understand you. My Elisa was ill for a long time too. I've been divorced for many years. I raised my daughter alone, he said quietly, she developed anemia at 15, and then, his voice trembled, then leukemia. She burned out quickly. We couldn't save her. I visit her every week. I can't let go. Tears welled up in his eyes. Danita touched his shoulder, feeling sympathy for him. How can I help you? She asked. Don't worry, I can do something. Yes, they told me I'm here for a maximum of three days, he thanked Danita. I think they provide food here. All right. I'll buy some food and some tissues, the visitor said as she left. The man didn't have time to argue with her. Danita went shopping, buying a lot of different food and hygiene supplies. Oh, thank you, the stranger blushed, I feel very uncomfortable. Danita, she smiled, I'll leave you my phone number. If you need anything, be sure to call. Esteban, he thanked her once again, Danita, you must have been sent from above. I don't have any relatives here. Just one friend, but he's away on a duty right now. That's good. Her eyes sparkled. I'll come to see you again tomorrow evening. It's a pity that Seraphim isn't allowed here. He's very concerned about you, she laughed. Maybe, God willing, we'll meet him later, Esteban smiled. Thank you and your friend. Please give him my regards and thanks. Thus, Danita's fate changed in the most unexpected way. She didn't regret not reconciling with her husband. At that time, she wasn't thinking about new acquaintances. Life brought her and Esteban together. Although the man was discharged from the hospital, their acquaintance continued. Because they both had experienced the loss of children, they had much to talk about. Gradually, they realized that their bond was not only due to their shared tragedy, but also something more. Almost six months passed. Esteban was on his way to visit Danita. They were going to the theater that evening. But the man felt that he needed to change his plans. On the way, he bought flowers, a constant feature of his visits. Danita, he said shyly, I need to tell you something important. The woman tensed. Esteban was so dear to her that she couldn't imagine her life without him. Seraphim was sitting beside them, watching both his owner and the guest with interest. I love you, he said, and Seraphim barked happily while Danita laughed. But it's not you who should be confessing love, it's me. She patted the dog on the head, I love you too, she added, looking into Esteban's eyes. Almost two years later, Leon was born unexpectedly to his parents. A little boy with a calm demeanor and exceptional intelligence. 
Sometimes, Danita looked at him and felt as if she were seeing not Leon, but her first son, Alonzo. Especially remarkable was Seraphim's attachment to the new child. The dog loved no one as much as him, and when Leon turned three, the Labrador showed such loyalty to him that Danita no longer doubted that her Alonzo had returned to her. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.